second. There we go. So recording it. So if you aren't able to hear all of it or you're like, what did he say again? You'll be able to get the recording after this meeting. Um, we have a guest on tonight and I was going to let Coach Mike, because he has uh, knows Dave really well, introduce him to us. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited uh, for uh, Coach Dave Schultz to be with us tonight. Um, I've known Dave for... Man, since 2015, I, I worked with him personally when I was uh, when I was coaching football at uh, Utah State University and uh, stayed connected with him uh, throughout the years. And when I got into endurance sports, he was a uh, he was the initial person I actually reached out to uh, before I knew Natasha to to help me get going uh, in the sport. Uh, just because I knew uh, how well read and how well researched he is, and uh, so. I just want to take a second to introduce him. Currently, he's the head strength coach at Texas Tech University, so he's he's moved on up from Utah State to Texas Tech. Uh, I did drop a link to his bio from Texas Tech in the chat, so you can click on that and see all the places he's been. Spent some time in the NFL, but uh, some of the key things that I think are really important for us uh, to know that Dave knows what he's talking about is uh, he's earned his CSCS certification from the NCSA. Precision Nutrition Certification, ISSA Sports Nutrition Certification, Biosignature Modulation, PICP Levels 1 and 2 Certification, Metabolic Analytics Certification, Kinetic Chain Enhancement, Upper and Lower Body Certification, and of course the Functional Range Conditional Mobility Specialist Certification, which is a topic for a whole nother, uh, another call. But uh, all that to say, Dave is a really good friend of mine. He, he's very well researched and I'm super excited for him to share with us uh, some opportunities we have to, to, for this team. So Coach Scholes. Yes, sir. Everybody's ready. Yep, perfect. Dave, Dave, I'll just say one more thing, guys, that if you have any questions as he's presenting, type them in the chat and we'll get to them and we'll save some time at the end for that. Okay, so Coach Dave. Yeah, it's, it's everybody thumbs up on my screen here. Okay, great, okay. Um, so here's my disclaimer right out of the gate. I know we're going to be talking about um, supplementation and nutrition, very, very heavy. Here's the basis of what I'm going to say is I'll reserve the right to be wrong. Um, and I want to present this information to you as this is what I would do and what I'm concerned about as it relates to aerobic health. Um, I am not a competitive aerobic athlete. Most of what I've done and the people that I train are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. But I can tell you from uh, the roads that I've gone down that it doesn't matter what your endeavor is, aerobic training is at the base of all of it. So my primary focus is obviously football, but two days a week, my guys are working on building the aerobic engine because you cannot do anything without it. So here's some base concepts around supplementation. So the, the first thing you should always ask is why are you supplementing? Why do you need it? And the main reason is, is if you have some type of nutritional deficiency that cannot be met through the consumption of whatever macros you're taking in. Okay. And what you probably need to consider is if you're removing a non-processed, that's key, non-processed macronutrient group, 90% of the time or more, you're probably going to have um, some type of deficiency that needs to be met through supplementation. Blood work, I, I've, I've spent some time taking a look at uh, the information that Natasha and, and Mike have sent over. I think that that needs to be at the heart of all of it, okay? The blood will never lie. It's a famous book that is written by one of my best uh, mentors in the field, Dr. James Laval. Um, so if you want to know what's going on, you have to take a look at your blood. But if you have a proper practitioner in metabolic analytics and they know how to do a proper skin fold assessment, it's a very good non-invasive way for you to follow up in between blood work checks. Okay. If you're going to go down the road and remove pharmaceuticals or you don't want to use pharmaceuticals, like for example, I have a gene snip that really affects my thyroid. All of my, uh, my mom and my dad are on thyroid medication. I've been able to solve the problem through supplementation without having to use Synthroid or synthetic thyroid medication. Um, questions about dosages will come up 
Okay. I, I don't have much about them in this presentation because that is inherently uh, individualized. So again, I'll be happy to take uh, questions or if we don't get to all the questions, I'll put my email on here if you want to recommend. Um, but I'm, it's hard to talk about dosages. And then what I'm going to give you at the very, very end is a company that I found and I've been working with for the better part of eight years now. And the reason I work with them is because I believe in the way they're formulating supplements and the way they're shipping supplements. And I'm going to talk about some of that tonight too, and how important that piece of it is um, when you're going to supplement. So base products, the first thing is, is taking a look at a good multi. What do you want out of your multi? You want proper derivatives of, of absorbable vitamin and mineral chelates. Okay. I have a couple examples here, but there's a broad base that's going to go inside of a multi. So the first one that's going to be really important to everybody is going to be folate. You need to make sure that folate is in the active form that's absorbed by the body. So one of the big reasons that I'm not a fan of grain based foods outside of the whole gluten uh, conversation is because they're usually fortified with folic acid. Well, folic acid is a synthetic form of folate, and a lot of us have a gene polymorphism that won't allow us to convert folic acid to the active form, with it, which is L5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. And it can actually be a carcinogen to some of us. Um, so it, that, that's just one thing. I've got others here. So vitamin K, K1 and K2, I'm going to talk about that in a second, especially how important K2 is to arterial compliance. Uh, B12. So the synthetic form is cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is actually cyanide and cobalamin put together. Yes, yeah, cyanide like the poison. Um, so again, it's something if you're taking a poor formulated uh, multi, you're basically putting low, low, low doses of cyanide in your system. Okay. Other things to take a look at iodine. It's not commonly found in cheaper multis, but you need it for the health of the thyroid. Um, you need selenium to go along with it. So that's important. Um, you need to understand that I'm going to talk about the breast and the prostate here a little bit, especially when we get to zinc. What's true for the breast is true for the prostate. So if you want health in those tissues, or if that's something that you are concerned about with and you have a family history, um, iodine is going to be important. Chromium, um, probably the conversation that Mike and I talk about the most is carbohydrates and what is the best form to get carbohydrates in the quickest. If you're going to be taking down a lot of carbohydrates, chromium is going to be important for managing the blood glucose. Okay. Uh, trimethylglycine, the, another way, another uh, name for that is betaine, and that's really important for kidney health. So especially if you're going to be taking down a lot of carbohydrates and you're going to be taking down a lot of fluid, we got to take good care of the kidneys. So trimethylglycine, it's actually kind of a B vitamin derivative. Um, you want to make sure your multi is fortified with that. Some gender considerations. So the biggest two that I have is iron and calcium. Okay. Iron if you're deficient, you are going to need to supplement. You will notice a performance drop. But if you are not deficient, you do not want to be supplementing with it because it's basically like oxidizing the inside of the arterial wall. Okay. So iron along with vitamin D is something that I'd be having checked regularly, no matter what. Um, I could tell you a personal story a few years ago, uh, my uh, doctor, my, my naturopath that I work with said, Hey, I want you to take this mineral formula. I didn't double check it. It had iron in it. And then the next time I had my blood work, my ferritin was 500 and my iron was through the roof. And it was like, what's going on here. And I didn't look to make sure that it wasn't fortified with iron, which when you're eating a lot of meat and training with weights as a male, you should be fine. Um, but definitely be sure that uh, you're not taking iron if you don't need it. Okay. Calcium is the same way. Okay. Typically, if you're eating a balanced diet, calcium is not going to be an issue. 
the issues as people get older, when they talk about osteoporosis or having issues with bone health, it's usually this marriage that exists between vitamin D, vitamin K2 and magnesium and adding extra calcium to the plate is not usually the problem, okay? Vitamin D, okay, so every single cell in the human body has a receptor site for vitamin D, okay? It's gonna be critical for hormone production, cognitive development, so beta amyloid clearance. So basically, um, if you've had any familiarity with Alzheimer's, hopefully none of you have, but if you're familiar with it at all, part of the issue with the disease is we develop this plaque inside of the brain. Um, having optimal levels of vitamin D will help to clear that, okay? Immune function. So if you're talking about um, wanting to make sure your lungs work the way that they want, vitamin D actually protects the single cell uh, layer of the lining of the lung, okay? So being able to move air inside and outside properly, if you don't have optimal levels of vitamin D, your lung function is not going to be optimal, okay? Bone health, we just talked about that a little bit, but here is the big key, okay? If you move up vitamin D in the diet and it's in the abs absence of vitamin K2, you're going to risk putting calcium in the soft tissues. So muscular tissue, tendon, ligament, and then the arterial wall, okay? You move up vitamin D, you have to have adequate amounts of vitamin K2 inside the system, okay? Um, the biggest, the main function of vitamin K2 is proper calcium channeling, okay? If you want the arterial wall to be compliant, be able to expand and to be able to contract properly, optimally, you need to make sure that you're taking vitamin K2, okay? It will activate matrix GLA protein, which inhibits the calcification of the vascular wall, okay? And it acts like an antioxidant as well, all right? Nitric oxide formation. So again, the number one thing that I've heard from all my cardiologist mentors that is universal with heart disease is nitric oxide formation drops like a rock. So when they bring them into the clinic and they're doing all the advanced cardiovascular screening, the number one thing is their nitric oxide formation drops, okay? It's very important for managing inflammation and insulin sensitivity. So when you talk about vitamin K in conjunction with zinc, one of the biggest things that type one diabetics have in common is the inlet cells of the pancreas can no longer make insulin and they're deficient in zinc and they're deficient in vitamin K, okay? Kidney stone formation. So if you have issues with any type of kidney stones, it's almost the same thing as saying um, you have, it's like saying you have a preform of some type of arterial disease, okay? If you're making, if you have kidney stones for some reason, start taking vitamin K2 now, okay? Myelin disorders. Myelin is basically the sheath that surrounds the conduction of the ends of nerves. So it is very important for nerve conductivity. If you're taking animal-based foods in on a regular basis, okay, it's in there in limited quantities, but I'm pretty convinced that vitamin K2 belongs with uh, along the lines of base supplementation. Omega-3 fatty acids, so fish oils. Again, every single cell in the body has receptor site for omega-3s. Very important for arterial compliance. There is really, really compelling research. If you want to go down the road of, uh, I mean, certainly you could put it in your PubMed, but the best company out there that's doing research on fatty acids called Omega Quant. And they do really, really inexpensive uh, ship to your house omega-3 index testing um, of all kinds. And uh, there's very good research out right now that your omega-3 index and all-cause mortality is uh, highly correlated, okay? So omega-3 index is basically measuring DHA, DHA and EPA concentration inside the red blood cell. You want to get that number over 8%. Okay. Uh, inflammation. So I know that that is pretty well known that omega-3 index, but it, it uh, omega-3 fatty acids, but inflammation, not just in the joint, but also in the digestive tract and the brain. 
Um, so if you're having some type of digestive issue, I'm going to talk about that uh, in a minute here, but adding fish oils, particularly EPA and EPA based fish oil to your regimen should help uh, calm down the digestive tract. Um, postpartum depression and nursing. So obviously all of us are training hard, but if we have any mothers or soon to be mothers, uh, it's actually very, very linked that DHA dropping in the blood of uh, mother or mother to be is a big reason for postpartum depression. This is a supplement. Again, uh, don't have time to really get into everything, but with fish oils, it's very important that they're cold packed and they're cold shipped and heat resistant mylar, which is basically like the material that we would put if we all lived, uh, I mean, I live in West Texas, so it's fairly hot here now, but certainly when I lived in Arizona, um, the sunscreen in your car, okay? And again, it's one of the big things I love about Designs for Health is because that's how they ship their products. If you're buying your fish oils from a place and you can't guarantee that they're cold packed, cold shipped, the fish oils will go rancid really quick. Okay. So they're basically the, the fats will oxidize and it's making the problem worse. If you can't ensure that the quality of the product and uh, the shipping process is accurate. Zinc. So it's the great organizer mineral. So if you want to do basically anything inside the body, the enzyme function that goes along with zinc is uh, very important. So you won't make the proper amount of testosterone and manage your estrogens inside your body for men or women without uh, adequate levels of zinc. Again, very highly concentrated in the breast and the prostate. It acts like an antioxidant inside the breast and the prostate. And the receptor sites for zinc in those tissues is almost 10 times higher than anywhere else inside the body. Um, talked about it with vitamin K and insulin, wound healing. So again, if, if people have very brittle nails, so fingernails or toenails, it's, it's really uh, kind of a clinical sign um, without doing any blood testing that they're zinc deficient. Very important for the gut. So zinc carnosine is actually a form of zinc that uh, is important if you have any type of ulcers or, or need some serious gut repair. Detox. Um, so I talk with uh, Mike a couple of times about uh, where you're doing your swimming, right? You're obviously putting in a ton of mileage in, in the pool. Um, if you are pay spending a lot of time in the pool and it's obviously it's being treated with chlorine, chlorine will eventually over time, if it's not detoxed properly, it will upset lung barrier function. Okay. And zinc is very, very important in the detox process. So um, if you're not consuming adequate amounts of pasture raised meat or wild game, the quality of the meat, again, it's, it's very, very important. Zinc is going to be something that you're going to want to take a look at. Uh, and again, talking about the quality of the supplement, you want to make sure you have a properly chelated form of zinc. So if you're looking at your current product and it says zinc oxide on the back, you're going to want to throw that out. Sleep. Okay, by far the most anabolic process uh, to all of us. Uh, the first thing is high quality form of magnesium. It's the mineral of relaxation. So anxiety, nervousness, having trouble calming down at the end of the day, uh, magnesium is gonna be something that you wanna add to the repertoire, okay? Chelates of zinc and their roles. So again, looking at the proper forms of zinc and what it's gonna help you do. So uh, magnesium glycinate, so it's basically magnesium and glycine, detoxification pathways absorb well in muscle tissue. Magnesium threonate, so it's magnesium and threonic acid. So this form of magnesium will push across the blood brain barrier. So uh, it's the type of magnesium that I suggest that you take with dinner or right before you're about to go to bed. Magnesium orotate, so magnesium and oritic acid. So it's gonna stimulate the uh, production of glycogen and ATPs in the heart muscle, okay? So uh, really helping with cardiovascular function. Magnesium glycerophosphate, so it's the most absorbable 
form of magnesium um, in it just in general. So if I was going to sit there and say, hey, I just want you to take the most absorbable form by the research um, of the 20 different uh, or so form chelate forms of magnesium in, in the research, magnesium glycerol phosphate is the most uh, absorbable in the tissue. Melatonin. So this one, um, this one is actually highly, highly correlated with a gene SNP if you need to utilize it or not. Without getting into that testing, melatonin's biggest role is if you can't fall asleep. So if you can't fall asleep, first thing I would tell you to do is take a look at your sleep hygiene, i.e. the process you go into before you want to go to bed. But if you feel like that process is correct and you hit the pillow and you're just laying there, chances are your body's not making melatonin for some reason, okay? You want a formula that's a sustained release capsule, okay? So it's not going to be uh, just hit you right away because then you may end up waking up again in an hour or two. But since uh, COVID came, there's a lot of good research about the other functions that melatonin has inside the body. So it's very important for regulating blood sugar. And again, it's important for lung health. So um, if you have uh, an issue falling asleep and you're going to utilize melatonin, it's actually going to help you in other ways. If you're a night shift worker, I can almost promise you that uh, it's something that you're going to want to take a look at. Um, because again, with, when you're disrupting the pineal gland like that, by having to work at night and then sleep pattern getting disrupted, um, it's hard for your body to figure out when it should be pumping out melatonin. Digestive support. So in terms of, uh, the research that I've gone through and the people that mentor me, it's the thing that we know the least about. If you want the best test out there and digestive health is something that you feel like you've struggled with, or if you feel like, um, you know, bowel movements or you notice disrupted patterns when you eat certain things, the best test out there is what's known as the GI map. It is a stool test, okay, but I think they're up to almost 70 different kinds of pathogens, yeasts. Uh, probiotics, they measure for all of it. Okay. And the thing about the GI map is, if you're going to solve your digestive problems naturally, the whole idea is you have to put out the fire so that you can rebuild the house. Okay, if you're going to utilize supplements or supplementation, you have to know if there's some type of a yeast or pathogen that's in there. And then if you're going to try and kill it naturally, botanicals work great, but they only work on a one-to-one -one basis. So what might kill one pathogen, like for example, I had an athlete that did a mission over in Northern Russia and he had bad GI issues and he came back with a nasty pathogen called Morganella morgani, but I needed a test for it. And then the thing that kills Morganella is black walnut root. So black walnut root will kill Morganella, but if he had, let's say some type of candida he may have needed to use like cat's claw or something like that. So it can get inherently complicated. But the beauty of that test is once you take the test, you'll have a practitioner that can read it and should be able to tell you exactly what you need um, if digestive issues are, are a problem. Um, but just general digestive uh, information that I think is pretty universal, glutamine. So the epithelial lining of the gut uses glutamine as fuel uh, to repair itself. Uh, there's a loading phase that goes with it. So if you've never used glutamine, I would tell you, or I would take 60 grams a day for five days and then 10 to 30 grams after day based on how hard you're training or if you feel an illness coming on or if you feel like your immune system needs a boost. Uh, probiotics. Again, really complicated topic, but the thing I tell everybody is rotate the products to ensure that you're getting a lot of different strands through there. Take it either first thing in the morning or right before bed on an empty stomach. Um, I'm going to talk about HCL in your gut for a second, but you want those probiotics to be able to survive that digestive trip. Um, here's what's important with probiotics. 
researchable strands in a researchable quantity that are delivered to the digestive tract alive. Okay. So if you have a product and you buy it and you look at the back and it tells you, um, it'll, it'll give you usually a number where it'll say like 5 billion CFU. CFU stands for colony forming units. Okay. If you look at the fine print on the product and it says the capsule and the colony forming units as the time of production, that doesn't tell you much. Because if it's during the time of production, you don't really care about that. You want it to be delivered when you take the capsule. So again, cold packed, cold shipped, heat resistant mylar, and that it's in a capsule that's going to survive the trip through the digestive tract. Otherwise, the probiotics might be dead by the time that you take them. And in which case, that's worthless to you. Okay. HCL. So HCL is basically hydrochloric acid in the stomach. With all supplements, it's not what you consume, it's what you absorb, okay? So B vitamins need HCL in order to absorb. We talked about folate and its cognitive effects for the brain, okay? B6, B9, B12 are all important for preventing Alzheimer's and make sure our brain works. There's high correlation between neurological disease and low HCL in the gut, okay? HCL is gonna be depleted very quickly by stress. Okay, so the more stress you are, whether it's training or work or personal relationship, whatever, the less HCL you're going to make. Um, if you want a quick field test on HCL and how much you need, okay, you can buy the HCL capsules that I put on the link here. Take a 200 milligram capsule, one, halfway through your meal. That's a protein based meal. So if you have eight ounces of protein, eat half the protein, take the one HCL, eat the rest of the meal. At the end of the meal, if you feel like a warm sensation, like you've just had a cup of hot tea, you'll know that you're adequate in HCL production, okay? If you feel nothing, next meal go to two. If you feel nothing, next meal go to three, go to four, okay? It's not uncommon for some people to have to start if they wanna replace HCL properly to have to start off with six or seven capsules. When you get that warm sensation, then you know that you can start to back things down. I first did that test in 2011. I still take, because of training and stress and everything else, I still take at least two caps with every single meal um, because I just think it's that important. And uh, I, I think it gets depleted and run out very, very quick. Last one here. Um, this is basically what I'm going to term performance, but what may be more commonly referred to as quote unquote pre-workout. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go here, but as an athlete that's trying to do a lot of work for a long amount of time, I would say your best friend in terms of uh, training and getting the brain going is to drive up acetylcholine as much as possible, okay? It's opposite of kind of what you would do if you were gonna do a one rep max in the weight room, in which case I would tell you, you're gonna try and drive up dopamine as much as possible, okay? So the product that I put on here is going to make your brain work for a long amount of time, okay? It's gonna drive up acetylcholine. I won't go through all the points, but they're on the slide. Two other things that I think you should look at from just a general performance pers perspective is carnitine. So carnitine's main function it is going to drive fatty acids into the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, again, it's really important for arterial compliance, heart health, and blood fats. Um, and then the other thing is D-ribose. So D-ribose is a five-carbon single sugar that's used in all cells of the body, but it's used in large quantities by the heart muscle. Uh, it's very important for making ATP and it's going to get depleted really, really quick during intense exercise. Um, so utilizing D-ribose, there's actually a good product on here that combines carnosine and D-ribose in a, a liquid formula. So you can take it down really quick. Okay. I put the links on here, so I'm more than happy to email the slide out here to all the products. I put the code at checkout because it'll give you 40% off um, 
the wholesale price or the price that's that's listed on there. So um, you're almost getting the product the product at wholesale. Um, if you're interested in purchasing any of the products, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to do my best uh, through email. Or if you just want the PowerPoint, if you just send me an email, uh, I'll I'll send you back the PDF. Um, other than that, I'm happy to open up with whatever time we have left to uh, to any questions. That was awesome. I feel like I have to. I'm so glad I recorded that because I have to go back and like watch it like five times over. So thank you so much for that information. Um, we did have a question, and I do want to say, Dave, if you can send me the PowerPoint. I would love to send that out to everyone, especially yeah. since all the links to what you yep. feel need to be taking is in that. Um, the one question, and then anyone else, if you have specific questions, type them in the chat. Um, Katie Mesrel asked, what is your thought on liquid probiotics? Again, with probiotics, the biggest thing is how are they coming from the plant where they're being manufactured? to your digestive tract. You have to put it in context of that trip. I'm not super confident. I haven't seen any products that are delivered by liquid that I'd feel great about. The biggest detriment that I have with myself right now is I found a company that I feel really strongly about in terms of raw materials, packaging process, manufacturing process, delivery to the consumer, customer service. I mean, I'll put it to you like this. When I was in the NFL, I was utilizing these products with guys uh, who are pros and they're getting drug tested up to six times a week. And so I could not afford to have any, take any chances with supplements. And so the biggest, uh, detriment to my knowledge I would say right now is what other companies are doing what because I have a company that I feel good about and I'm kind of done necessarily looking if you want me to take a look at the product if you screenshot it send it to me in an email I'd be happy to look at the label and give you my thoughts uh, via email um, but other than that I'd have to do some research inside the company so uh, without answering um, but the probiotics that I use short answer are typically powdered form or encapsulated form. Perfect. Okay. The next question uh, comes from Malcolm. Uh, he says, how does a vegan plant-based diet affect supplement intake? Yeah. So the first one is the obvious answer is getting your amino acid profile checked to see if you're deficient in any aminos. So that would be one. I would say after that, you'd want to take a hard look at B vitamins, carnitine, zinc, and that HCL status. So those four. Perfect. Um, we're going to answer one more question here. Um, can you take a bit more? Uh, can you talk a bit more about folic acid? Why is that bad if it's what a supplement is using for folate? For folate. So folic acid. So again, with supplements, there's always different for vitamins and minerals. There's always different names, right? They have different derivatives of product, right? So the, the easy way to, that I learned it, like the first day I learned this, I never forget is with zinc and magnesium. The first name is either zinc or magnesium, and then it has a last name. If the last name is oxide, it's only absorbed about 2% to what it says, if you have adequate HCL status in your gut, right? So if you're taking 100 milligrams of zinc oxide, you're absorbing two milligrams if you have good HCL. So it's not a product you wanna use, okay? For folic acid, if you look at the back of your product or you look at any type of a food stuff, and it says it's fortified with folic acid. The, the, the actual name on it is folic acid. That's actually the synthetic form of the nutrient. The active form of the nutrient inside our body is what's called L5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. So if you take folic acid and you have the gene SNP that I talked about, which is just the way that our body processes almost anything, right? 
if anybody of you want that, I can give you the guy that I think is really good at uh, taking like your 23 and me raw data and reading your genes like all the way down. He's a, uh, he works at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester in Minnesota. So he's very smart. Uh, he actually read my genes for me and he's the one who uh, talked to me about this. But if you're using folate and you have a genetic SNP for your folic acid gene, you're basically actually killing your body's ability to absorb absorbable form of L5 methyl tetrahydrofolate. It's actually blocking those genes. So it's like, uh, you know, putting water in your gas tank, basically. So you just, you, you need to take folic acid for a lot of us. We need to have foods that are, uh, contain folic acid, but it needs to be the right form. Okay. Um, so I, I would strongly recommend that if you're ut utilizing a multi or any type of B vitamin, uh, product, and it says folic acid on there and not L5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, uh, to get a new product. Okay. So those are all the questions we have. So, uh, coach Mike. Don't yeah. I was just going to add something real quick. Um, just to echo the products that we're using here. Uh, I've been using them now for probably a year from designs for health and they're fantastic. Uh, Dave talked about like the shipping process and stuff, but like, you know, I've noticed living in Texas, like depending on what time of year it is, like they'll take the extra time to put it in like the cold pack storage. If it's really hot outside, they give you the option to delay shipment, uh, you know, at checkout, if it's going to be over the weekend and you feel like it's going to sit in a facility somewhere that's probably too hot. So I, I highly recommend the products. We'll send them out. And then the other thing I was going to say that, you know, Dave opened up with in terms of like dosing, and that's very individual. These products do come with like recommended dosages on the, on the labels themselves. And while th those may not be, you know, what you need to use generally, I would say that it's at least a starting point. So like, you're not getting these products and being like, I have no idea how many of these, you know, capsules to take or whatever it is. You, you do, they do send with, with recommended dosages. Now you could probably dive into exactly how much more you need to do or less or whatever, but uh, you will get that too. Okay. Perfect. Dave, thank you so much for your time. That was really incredible. And um, guys, we also, as he talked about blood work at the beginning, um, I'm not going to take any more time this evening. I think we can talk about that next week. And honestly, I want to chat to Dave more about that because we want to make sure whatever we have set up is the best for you guys. Um, but that is in the works. Like, being able to get a comprehensive, you know, blood work panel coming your way so you can get all this information to know exactly what is missing and you need a supplement on. So we'll probably do that on next Sunday's call. Okay. So hold on and we'll get that information to you. So I'll send this out after this call. And if you have any information for oh, questions for Dave, then just hit him up. Okay. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great week, y'all. Perfect.